During meditation, oh it is an experience of more than 30 years ago, Swami Satyanand Saraswati, the founder of Bihar School of Yoga shared, when I had no idea of Tantra. I was just 19 when I entered the monastery of my Guru. I had very little time when I joined Swamiji's ashram. Since I was not yet a sannyasi, I was still a brahmachari. My mantra was Gayatri. It is the mantra for children, the mantra of intuition. So I used to recite Gayatri and while I was reciting it, I used to see peculiar geometrical figures. I always thought these were coming up because I was so bad at mathematics. Maybe I was lost in unconsciousness and came face to face with the yantra. But ignorant that I was, I thought that they were the repressions of my mathematical phobia. Later, the geometrical figures gained terrifying momentum. Sometimes I used to see the whole play of geometry. I asked many Swamis, Mahatmas and wise men, including my Guru, Swami Shivananda, about this and they gave me one simple answer. It is your causal body, your unconscious body and your deeper self. I said, why do I not see my Guru? Why do I see these triangles, circles, hexagons and quadrangles? They said, that is the creation, the whole fantastic drama. These geometrical figures were what is referred to in the Tantric tradition as Yantras. Yantras are ancient graphical representations of the divine, rooted in prehistoric times and found across many cultures. In classical Sanskrit, the word Yantra means instrument or a device and it can be approached differently. Yantra is derived from the root word Yam, meaning to hold or to sustain the essence of an object or concept in our minds. So Yantras are not superstitions. Yantra is a tool for our spiritual advancement. It is a sacred instrument for invoking divine energy and it works by sustaining our minds, our focus on that truth. We will delve deeper into understanding how it operates later in this video. Yantras trace back to the Vedic period in India, that is 1500 to 500 BC, originating in India over 5000 years ago. The Vedas the sacred texts of Hinduism were the first book to mention them. Yantras were initially used as a tool for ritual worship and later became associated with a mystical diagram and magical spell. The use of Yantras spread throughout Asia and eventually to the West. In the 20th century, they became popular among New Age spiritual seekers and hippies. Today, people of all faiths and backgrounds use Yantras to connect with the universal divine energy. Yantras are utilized in various forms, painted on temple walls, engraved on copper plates or written on paper squares within amulets. Each yantra serves a specific purpose and holds significance in spiritual practices like those of the Aghoris, a sect of sadhus. The study of the yantras and meditation on them is in fact an important footstep in the particular spiritual path of the Aghoris. In essence, as Devi Bhagavat Puran reveals, Archibhave Tatha Yantram, meaning Yantra is a symbol of divine power and hence it is worshipped as a deity. We can understand Yantras on two levels on the microcosm and on the macrocosm, that is on the subtle level and the gross level. First, let's understand it on the level of the macrocosm. Philosophy is written in this grand book, the universe, that stands continually open to our gaze. But the book cannot be understood unless one first learns to comprehend the language and read the letters in which it is composed. It is written in the language of mathematics and its characters are triangles, circles and other geometric figures without which it is humanly impossible to understand a single word of it. Without these, one wanders about in a dark labyrinth. Galileo Galilei In this world, there exists an underlying geometrical pattern within everything, whether it be the seemingly random branches of a tree, 
Snowflakes, the petals of flowers, are the formations of galaxies. They can all be described through symmetrical geometrical patterns. When a person enters deeper meditative levels or consumes psychedelics, these geometrical patterns start to manifest to them. A Reddit user described their experience after consuming psychedelics as visuals that are practically transparent but highly geometric and seemingly everywhere. French mathematician Benoit Mandelbrot refers to them as fractals. Yantras are, in essence, these geometrical patterns aligned in such a way that when one meditates deeply upon them, they induce a particular state within them. Adi Suyash shares his experience that whenever he didn't understand a philosophical or scientific concept, he would look at or say meditate upon the Yantra of Devi Saraswati, the goddess of learning and knowledge. And after just a few minutes of doing this, he would feel a strange clarity and things that were previously incomprehensible would start to make sense. Such is the impact of these patterns within oneself. Logically, these patterns may not make any sense at all. Their effect is entirely unconscious. For instance, the golden ratio. It is a mathematical ratio or geometrical pattern known for its aesthetic appeal in various forms of art, architecture and nature. Unconsciously, it creates a sense of beauty within the mind. Even in the human face, the golden ratio is often applied to the proportions of different facial features, such as the width of the nose to the width of the face, the width of the mouth to the width of the nose, and so on. It has been observed that faces with these proportions feel more attractive and beautiful, and the models tend to use this geometry with their makeup to look more attractive. In Eastern mysticism, the images of deities can also be seen as yantras. Their forms are symbolic. Whether it's the blue throat of Lord Shiva, a metaphor for the awakened throat chakra, or his third eye. Whether it's the noose and goad of the goddess, symbolizing attachment and aversion, or the peaceful face of Buddha, which instills a sense of tranquility within. All of these traditional images fall into the category of yantra serving two purposes. Firstly, to function as a device and induce a certain state in the observer's mind and secondly, to carry a symbolic meaning in themselves, revealing and sustaining the essence of that deity or concept in our minds. This leads us to the symbolic aspects of Yantra. Viewed through the lens of the microcosm, a yantra is a map guiding the practitioner towards truth. Yantras are three-dimensional but are represented in two dimensions when drawn. Its structure is similar to a pyramid with the center at the top. This represents the process of creation, how creation is the descent from the higher reality to the lower one, from the divine or shivatattva to the earth element or Prithvi Tattva. Hence, the base of the Yantra is square. The square is a symbol of stability and solidity. Just as the earth provides a firm foundation upon which life exists, the square represents this quality of stability and groundedness. Thus, the earth element is often represented by a square shape and in the center, the heart of the Yantra lies a point or the Bindu, symbolizing the ultimate reality the Divine. The metaphor of a spider sitting at the center of its web, creating and reabsorbing its threads in concentric circles all held at one spot appears in the Brihadaranyak Upanishad. Although the spider's threads symmetrically spread forth into a discernible perimeter, they all connect to the web's focal center. The yantra's center, like the spider in its web, is the power source from which the entire creation radiates and the source of energy that gives rise to all forms in the universe. It is the heavenly essence from which the divided universe emerges. It is known as Bindu, the first drop, 
and it spreads out into the universe's material realm and concludes in the earth element. However, a spiritual practitioner has to ascend from bottom to top, hence beginning from the bottom. And the pinnacle, the supreme consciousness, is the goal that is revealed through the bindu, or the point in the yantra. For this, the practitioner enters through one of the four doors of the yantra. Each yantra has these four doors. These four doors are Kriya, Yog, Gyan and Charya or we may say the door of action or selfless service, the door of knowledge or wisdom, the door of meditation and mental discipline and the door of devotion and love for the divine. As Lord Krishna explained in the Bhagavad Gita, once you enter through these doors, you encounter eight lotus petals. These petals symbolize barriers in a way which hinder you from reaching the heart of the flower. If you wish to reach the center, you must cross these eight barriers, which are the eight bonds. The Tantric scriptures give a list of the Ashtapashas or the eight bonds or fetters which obstruct our spiritual progress. They are Grana or aversion, Lajja or shyness, Bhaya or fear, Shanka or doubt, Jugupsa or disgust, Kul or lineage, Shil or modesty and uprightness and Jati or birth or caste. The primary goal of the spiritual practitioner is to break free from these eight fetters. Once they break free from these bonds, scripture of Tantra states that they become divine. Pasha Yukta Bhavet Jeev, Pasha Mukta Sadashiv, or he who is bound by Pasha is Jeev, he who is freed from his Pashas is Shiva. Tantric practitioners utilize those things perceived with a sense of disdain in society as instruments to transcend these fetters. They meditate in cremation grounds and engage in practices with the five M's Madhya or wine, Matsya or fish, Mans or meat, Mudra or parched grain and Methun or sexual intercourse. These are often viewed as taboo in society. Yet the Tantrics attempt to perceive the Supreme Consciousness within them. For if everything is projection of consciousness, what is pure and what is impure? Through such practices, they transcend these eight fetters. Once you transcend these fetters, you begin to see reality as it is. Then come the triangles in the Yantra, usually a combination of some triangles that are inverted and others that are upright. The inverted triangle represents the Divine Feminine, while the upright triangle represents the Divine Masculine, or say Shiva and Shakti. Everything in this world is made up of these feminine and masculine principles. These two are like opposites that balance each other, like night and day or hot and cold. Masculine is like static, darkness and inaction, while feminine is like dynamic, brightness and action. Everything has a bit of both and the need to work together to maintain harmony. So, for example, the sun and the moon, or summer and winter, they all show how the masculine and feminine are inherent in everything and help keep the world in balance. These triangles also represent the triad of inertia, activity and harmony, the triad of walking, dreaming and deep sleep, the triad of creation, preservation and destruction, the triad of mind, intellect and ego and most importantly, the sacred triad of observer, the observed and the act of observing. The realization of their oneness and their transcendence leads the practitioner towards the center of the cosmic blueprint, where they attain final emancipation.
नेत्री